We've got you covered all season long. Welcome to the BCSN Nation podcast. All right, here it is. Welcome to the BCSN Nation podcast, season two, episode 37, brought to you, of course, by Buffalo Wild Wings, the greatest of all times. I, of course, am your host, Brandon Carnes, here with Justin Feldkamp, and we've got our baseball guru, Adam <laughs> Furness here with us. All right, so some things are very superstitious. Baseball, Stevie Wonder. I got to ask if you have a baseball superstition, a sports superstition as a coach, as a player. What are you your know take what? on it? Not really. I, okay. I was not big into the superstitions when I played back in the day. Maybe the same kind of sliding shorts, sliding shorts, like mm-hmm. to the degree to which they are now, did not necessarily exist. But I washed the sliding shorts, but I just wore the same kind. But that really wasn't superstitious. That was yeah, just yeah. kind of part of the uniform. Okay, Adam. You've yeah. Been deep in the baseball game, did you have a certain, I got to do this before every game, before every bat? What is it? Yeah, I'm going to go the opposite end of Justin. Very, <laughs> very superstitious. I was, um, whether it's, you know, in, in college, you have this many color belts and this many belts and this many sliding shorts or socks. And it was, you know, if we win, wear the same pair. You're wearing the same yep. thing every single time. Um, and then I always had, so in college we'd, we'd hit BP, other team would hit BP. Then we'd take infield while the other team was hitting BP. I'd always had Reese's peanut butter cup, right? There we go. Right after our BP <laughs> while they're hitting. So hey, whatever every gets single the game for five done. years. Yeah. So we'll do very it. superstitious for sure. Yeah. The only thing I ever did, I think sports wise was before every wrestling match, I had an orange Gatorade with a little bit of honey in it. That was my only like superstition every single time, win or lose. That's what happened. Coming up this week, you don't need any superstitions. You don't need any rituals. We've got our clip of the week. That can be your ritual brought to you by Renewal by Anderson. We'll get you caught up on all that is district baseball setting into regionals this week. So much more, including our game of the week. And if you want brand new episodes right here, every single Wednesday, 4 p.m. on BCSN or anywhere you get your audio podcast, Spotify, Amazon, Apple, we're all going to be there. And we're also going to be all over your social media at BCSN Sports across all platforms. Go ahead and hit that follow button. Without further ado, we'll get into it. We'll start on the D3 side of things. We'll head back a little bit toward the district bracket. Cisco, you can throw that thing up there. We'll see it. There it is. So this is the district bracket from last week, obviously. We'll get you caught up on where things have been and where we're going now. O'Hills beat their way into the district final, beating Genoa and Archbold. And then the bottom half of the bracket, Lake taking out Evergreen and Otsego, setting up that matchup last week. Otto Hills jumped out to a quick lead. They were up 4-0. And then the Flyers rallied back and they've done so in a lot of situations here with really, really good pitching. If you look at the NBC pitching stats from the end in the blade, three of the top four pitchers in the NBC are Lake Flyers and yeah. all of them have a one, one ERA or lower. Yeah. They've been fantastic. I mean, I don't think they're pun intended flying under the radar at all. They've been state ranked for virtually the entire season. Coach Casey Wood has done a great job in his third year there. And they win a district title for the first time in 10 years. Down 4 yep. nothing, comeback, score 8 unanswered. And they're going to take on Winford on Thursday at 2 o'clock yes. in a game at Patrick Henry, a first-class uh, site there for Patrick Henry High School. They were picked fourth. Lake was picked fourth in a pretty stacked NBC. Yes. Teams ahead of them, Eastwood, Oak Harbor, and Otsego. But Lake picked them off uh, each time and have played well from the get-go. Ryan Wagner's pitched well. Zach Sobzak. Jay Blazevich, Drew Tablick all have played key roles in getting the Flyers to where they are. But, you know, taking down Ottawa Hills ain't easy. They're the no. two time defending district champions, and they have reached not only the districts and advanced the regionals the past two seasons. Last year, they got to the state semifinals. So that was a team that has kind of been there, done that, and they took on the top pitchers in, uh, in, the, in the districts, in the semis, in the finals. And uh, I think that Lake earned every bit of that advancement to regionals. Yeah, for O Hills, it felt like a lot of things kind of went the wrong direction toward the end of the season. Even Sebastian Stevens, after one of their games, said, hey, we took in some lumps here towards the end of the year, but they felt like things were going right. Started out really hot, and then Lake continued to show, like, hey, we've been the team all year. We're here. Yeah, that's the thing that t- that is tough when it comes to this time of year is the fact that you do need to be playing really well in your best baseball kind of at this time. And Lake, obviously, hats off to them. Like Justin mentioned, Ottawa Hills kind of being the team in this district for the last couple of years is is super impressive for Lake to kind of take that win for them. But also, um, 
Ryan Wagner, yeah, their senior pitcher, being able to give up those four runs early, knowing who he was playing and still able to kind of settle in and, and hold Ottawa Hills to that to that four run spark and allow his offense to to put some runs up on the board. That's exactly what I was gonna talk about. Head coach Casey Witt talked about Ryan Wagner after that game. He said he pitched like a senior today. He battled his butt off and got everything out of him. He deserves all the credit for that. How tough is that you go down four runs early? You gotta really get your mojo back and now you get the win. You're really excited about that district title. You got to refocus in because it's regional time. Well, I tell you what, uh, the key part of that quote that you just read pitched like a senior Been there, done that he's okay. Hey, I know the type of team I got surrounding me. Yep. I know our bats will get going, whether it's in the bottom of the first inning or second inning or seventh inning, you know, have that confidence in your team and that belief and not hanging your head and show good body language, all those types of things, because you are a senior, you are a leader you got underclassmen or fellow seniors who might be looking up to you as a leader on the team. Yep. So your body language, I tell it to 12 and 10 year olds all the time. It's so important. It, people respond to that. The energy can just dive if you dive with your energy or, hey, I got this. It's all right. Four nothing. Still first inning. We still got plenty of at-bats to go. Yep. The players respond to that in the positive way, support each other, get the job done. And that's what they're doing. Now they have a chance to reach states if they can get through regionals for the first time since 2001. That's the last time Lake got to the state tournament loss in the semis. Yeah, long before any of these young men were yeah. around. Yeah. So they'll take on Winford tomorrow. That'll be over at Patrick Henry, like Justin mentioned. Somebody who is very familiar with very good pitching on the diamond. One of our top 20 female athletes of the BCSN era, Bree Pratt, all she does is pitch well, whether that's at high school, at Perrysburg, where she was a three-time letter winner, a two-time NLL player of the year, all-conference, all-district teams in 2016 and 17, first-team All-State 2017, headed down to Miami of Ohio after her time at Perrysburg. No big deal, just multiple, multiple games started. 26 starts in 2022, first-team All-MAC. 2023, 44 starts, first-team All-MAC. MAC Pitcher of the Year in 2023. She led the nation in wins her final year at Miami with 32 wins through two no hitters, 34 complete games. You got a chance to talk to Bree. It, there are staggering statistics for her success, both at the high school and collegiate level. Yeah, she was a joy to talk to. Uh, she's now living in Scottsdale, Arizona, still top five in Miami history in wins and strikeouts and a number of other statistics. And what stuck out to me in our conversation was just how she put in the work. She said, I outworked you in the off season. I'm going to outwork you in a game. I'm going to outwork you here from my spot in the circle to your spot in the batter's box. And she believed in the preparation and the work that she put in before she even got to the diamond. And that is how she was so successful at Perrysburg, uh, the team leader of the Perrysburg team, her senior year, they got all the way to the state tournament. And then a, a team leader for the Miami Red Hawks you see on the screen now, uh, a team that got to multiple NCAA tournaments, won multiple MAC titles, won multiple MAC tournament titles, and she was terrific and just fearless in the circle. Yeah, you talk about the work she put in in the offseason, right? She went from being all freshman team first year, slowly worked her way up, second team all MAC, and then two time first team all MAC, MAC pitcher of the year. How hard is it to continue, Adam, growing throughout your college career and see? maybe minimal success a little bit here and there as you're younger in your years and then find your way into the starting lineup, find your way as the person. Yeah, it's hard. Um, especially when she's coming from Perrysburg, three-time letter winner, uh, two-time NLL player of the year. And you come from being at a school where you're kind of the, the guy or you're the, the girl, you're the, big you're the fish. person on that team. Right. Um, and then going to a college where there's 34 of those people on your team. So it's a testament to who she is, like Justin said, and the, and the work that she puts in, it's a tough thing to do. And the thing, the stat that stands out to me is 34 complete games in 2023. I mean, that's that crazy. Huge that's, stat. Yeah. that's an insane amount. So that's awesome. And obviously she had a, a very, very impressive career. Yeah. Always the big fish in the pond. She became that at Miami as well. And was also always the big fish in the pond or the big chicken wing. It's Buffalo Wild Wings. We'll be back in 30 seconds after they talk to you about why you should go get some chicken wings. Buffalo Wild Wings, buy one, get one free. Boneless Thursday saved me so much cash, I can finally do everything I've ever wanted in life, like skydiving. You ready? No, this was a mistake, a huge mistake. I want to go back, I want to go back. Go, go, go! Ah! Yeah, I'll uh, probably just use the money I saved to get more. Buy one, get one free boneless wings at B-Dubs. No brainer. Buffalo Wild Wings. Let's go sports bar. A participating locations not valid with other offers or discounts. See website or app for details. 
Let's go sports bar and let's go D2 district playoffs. We got a Garaka for you. Don't you worry about a thing. And it ended up the one and two seed on this side, the division two Northwest one bracket, Napoleon beating their way through BG. Sorry, Adam and Brian to get their way to that <laughs> district final defiance, topping mommy and Fostoria to get there. And then Napoleon had themselves a day in that district final 13 to three, one, not easy to beat defiance. Two, not easy to beat Defiance by 10 runs. This is the Defiance program that has been there, done that six times in the states. Yeah. Three times they've won a state title, 13, 15, and 16. So it has been a little bit of time since the Bulldogs have won a state title, but still, uh, the, the caliber of talent that they churn out each and every year within that Defiance baseball program is superb. And for Napoleon, a team, to based on my research on the OHSA website, has never been to state for them to get their first district title since 2011 yep. to get their 20th win on the season, something that is not easily achieved at the high school level. They got it done. And you say they, they put it on them. Lucas Gherkin, three for four home run, Farber, yeah. four, five RBIs. Parker Woods had a day. Blaine Ford had a day. Uh, Jacob Shadel and Devin Dietrich, Trey Rubenstein, all key contributors uh, during this playoff run. And uh, Napoleon, you know, you want to play your best baseball at the right time. And then if you got that uh, one, two pitching duo, they can go in the semis and then the finals. Yeah. They, they work that recipe to success. Yeah, they, when you look at the stats for this team, they remind me a lot of some of the things we said with Lake, you look at the stats in the blade. They don't have a lot of hitters up towards the top of that statistical thing. But when you look at the pitching, right, they've got Rubenstein, Bickle, Shadel, all under a two ERA. So you're not going to score a lot of runs. Defiance, a team that had a ton of success throughout the season, found out that the hard way. You're not going to score a lot of runs against the Napoleon Wildcats. Yeah, it's super important in high school and, and especially deep in the playoffs to have a pitching staff that can throw like that. Like Justin said, a one-two punch that's able to keep runners off off the bases, off the board. Um, like like we mentioned, Defiance, kind of a powerhouse in this area, but that's a great win for Napoleon and a great win for the NLL. It kind of shows the talent the NLL's had this oh, yes. year. They just kind of beat up on each other all year and um, really made each other team like really good. And a lot of good, a lot of NLL teams are playing well right now. And Napoleon's a testament to that and, and the league that we've kind of built over here in Northwest Ohio. Yeah, you think you can look at basketball season, you can look at softball, you can look at now baseball for this NLL that. They beat the heck out of each other. And then by the time they go face everybody else, they go, all right, what do you got for us? Yeah, Napoleon has done great. I mean, uh, dating back to the football season, Trey yep. Rubenstein was a key contributor on that team. Yeah, we've said his played, name a few times. Played basketball <laughs> as well and now contributing on the diamond. So uh, I love the multi-sport athletes getting it done uh, and advancing deeper into the tournaments. They're going to take on a Huron team out of the Sandusky Bay Conference. That's going to be Thursday at BG Carter Park. Another fabulous environment for high school uh, sports and high school baseball, particularly. So uh, that's going to be an interesting matchup. And most of the coaches will stick to what you got, got you there. So a district semifinal pitcher will start in the regional semifinals. Right. So uh, for this Napoleon team, I was at an NLL athletic directors meeting. And one of the topics was, man, have you seen Napoleon's pitching? I mean, they're deep. And even when they go to a, a relief pitcher, they're, they're able to deal. And when you're taking on those teams with the way the NLL worked out, the crossover games, Buckeye to Cardinal division, those games counted in the standings. Right. You only faced the, uh, uh, or Napoleon's perspective, they faced the Buckeye division teams once, not twice, but those games against those top tier teams that are bigger and perennial powers like the Anthony Waynes and North views uh, in recent years that have gone on deep postseason runs. When yep. you play those types of teams in April and early May, definitely pays off when it comes to, okay, now we got to take on defiance state ranked team. Okay. We can handle it. It's not a guaranteed victory, but it gives you some comfortability knowing that, Hey, we've been in a game like this before in a 13 to three drubbing. They came through. How tough is it to turn around Adam after you, you beat a rival team, right? In the district final, you're getting yourself to a place that your school hasn't been in 13 years. These kids were barely toddling around and going to preschool the last time that Napoleon played in a game of this caliber to turn back around and be like, all right, we got to get back into this thing. Yeah. I don't know if it's tough necessarily is the word I use. I think you just kind of feed off that momentum that you have right now. Yeah. Obviously you're coming out of that game feeling really good, played really well. Offense was on, defense was on, pitching was on. So just kind of use that momentum that you've kind of built up for this game and and uh, know that, hey, we we can do this. We maybe haven't been here, but this is kind of what we've dreamed about ever since we were 
walking around and, right. and stuff like that. So just kind of use that momentum and, and try to build off that here against Huron. You talked about Lucas Gurk and having himself a day. Somebody else had themselves a day last week, and we're going to check that out in our clip of the week brought to you by Renewal by Anderson. All right, having himself a day was Avery Offenberg last week. Southie taking on Clay. It's the top of the eighth. We're in extras. Ooh. Avery Offenberg, I'm not keeping this ball in the stadium, off the scoreboard. Adam, you were there. How explosive was this play? I mean, it was crazy. Um, obviously, you can see him running around the bases there, super juiced up. I think at some point it may flash to home plate of, oh, yeah. of all We'll get all his teammates there. there. Don't they, you worry. I mean, the place was loud in that Clay Southview game. The stands were completely packed. There was maybe overflowed a little bit. And Avery, like, not just that game. He, I think he had a bases clearing triple with two outs to give Clay the first lead of the game somewhere in the six, five, six inning. So great game by him, great swing by him, and uh, something that was super exciting uh, for Southview for sure. Yeah, you can't hear it on this version right now that you guys are watching, but if you find it anywhere else, you can hear that ball come off the bat. It was loud. He knew as soon as it went, it was going, and you see everybody at home plate. They were stoked. A huge upset for Southview. Not just solo home run. You mentioned it. Six. RBI for Avery Offenberg in a game that mattered. Oh yeah, a huge accomplishment for him being a senior and being a three-sport athlete. He got his basketball season cut short because of a shoulder injury coming out of the football season. So for, to, for a, a guy like that who's meant so much to three sports at Southview for a long time during virtually his entire career, he's been able to play varsity earlier in his career in high school. And to be down five nothing and come back, you know, you gotta have that belief. We just talked about it with the Lake Ottawa Hills games. They were down four nothing and came back. Southview down four nothing or five nothing to a state ranked team and arguably the best team in Northwest Ohio throughout much, if not all, of the season up until yep. this point in Clay. Uh, yeah, I mean, for him to just cut it loose and they cut him up short in the district championship game against Perrysburg after this game. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we'll to unload and go off the board, like they, to hear yeah, that clash, the loud that sound, the loud sound of the ball hitting the bat at home plate, and then the loud sound of the ball crashing against the aluminum scoreboard. Fantastic. Avery Offenberg, our clip of the week brought to you by Renewal by Anderson. You want more clips like this? Head over to our TikTok at BCS Sun Sports. Give us a follow. We talked about all this D1 action. We're going to stay with it. We'll start with the D1 Northwest one side of the district bracket, getting ourselves in to regional play. Perrysburg, they beat Start and Ashland to reach that final. Southview beat Springfield. You saw the play there to beat Clay. And then Perrysburg just kind of turned it up a notch to get themselves into this regional matchup. Yeah, Perrysburg uh, has been fantastic. And we're going to talk about St. Francis here in just a second because I've compared both of their pitching statistics. Colin yes. Hennessy and Mana Bublik and then uh, Matthew Hubbard and Parker Ferris. They've given up two total runs throughout the entirety of of the postseason games that they've played thus far. So three games and two runs total that Perrysburg's pitching staff has given up. And uh, they were in many cases straight up dominant in that win over Southview. Yeah, and this, I mean, this another testament to how we've seen these NLL teams beat each other up and find new ways to get things going, right? Clay, you talked about it, the best team, arguably, in Northwest Ohio throughout all the regular season. Southview comes out, get that win. Perrysburg, they had beaten Southview 19 to nothing earlier in the season. But you're catching this Cougars team hot off a win over Clay, winning in the playoffs, and to be able to shut them down 5-1 is pretty impressive. Yeah, very impressive. I, I called the, the Perrysburg-Ashland game. I don't know if I've seen a more dominant performance out of a pitcher than Matt Hubbard that night. He was, yes. he was on. He was getting the ball back. He was in a groove and a really good rhythm and just completely dominated this Ashland team. But, um, yeah, testament to Southview. Obviously, beating Clay is, is huge for them. And Matt Hubbard, when we interviewed him after the game, mentioned – uh, uh, Brad asked him, uh, well, how do, looking forward to Southview, like, how do you play them? And he goes, look, they're the best team we've played on our schedule so far this year. And I think that's kind of how you need to look at yes. it. Your next game, take it as that's the best team you've played all year. And uh, obviously they beat Southview, was it 19 to nothing earlier in the year, but being able to have that mentality and look at them like that allows them to kind of keep their focus and, and not let their foot off the gas. Yeah. Any coach would be thrilled with that winning mentality. We'll see the Division One Northwest 2 side of the bracket. Cisco, you can throw that one up there. Here we go. Little update on this side. St. Francis took out A-Dub and Finley to get themselves into that district final. Whitmer on the top side of that bracket, they were able to beat Northview. Again, another one's team that's arguably the best in Northwest Ohio. 
to that point. Northview beat Wait, Whitmer beat Ross, and then Northview the second time they beat them. Those two kind of went back and forth throughout the season. So maybe not exactly the teams we expected in these district finals from one side of the bracket or another, but again, another case of these NLL teams beating each other up and St. Francis having gone through that Catholic league Mm -hmm. battle hardened to get themselves where they need to be. Yeah. At the beginning, uh, two weeks ago, when we were on this podcast. I thought Northview and Anthony Wayne were my picks and, you know, for valid reasons based on results throughout the entirety of the regular season. But that is not how it always shakes out when you get into bracket style and it's seven innings win and go or go home. And Whitmer came to play against Northview. St. Francis came to play against Anthony Wayne and and so far St. Francis beat Finley five to one, Anthony Wayne four to nothing, and then Whitmer nine to one. I mentioned Colin Hennessy and Mana Bublik. Oh yeah, we'll uh, their talk strength more about the schedule sure. has, has been fantastic. And, and when you got that one two duo, uh, it it works. And when your pitchers it, it's so important to develop those pitchers because Colin Hennessy was not the number one starter for St. Francis in the early and mid part of the season, but he came on strong and developed. And that's one thing that a good coaching staff does knowing that, okay, come postseason time, it's two, maybe three games, kind of sectionals into districts. But then once you get to districts and regionals, give me one guy and give me another guy and I'll rely on those guys, but he got to develop. It's not like, okay, you just flip a switch and okay, now you can go to the big stage and take on a top caliber team in the district semifinals, the district finals, and just expect them to deliver when they haven't done that all season long. But St. Francis and coach Bobby Edgo brought those guys along and it's paying off right now. I call it peaking season. Play your best when you (laughs) need to. Some great performances in districts. Some great performances throughout the entire 2023-2024 school year. And that's what BCSN Honors is for, all right? We take the best performances, the best athlete, the best play from the 23-24 school year. And we got some some previews of stuff to come to show you. We'll start with our student section of the year. Two winners battling it out for who's the best. Southview, the winner of our fall student section of the season. And then Toledo Christian, back-to-back winners for the winter season. They'll duke it out, see who comes out on top, takes home student section of the year. We've got play of the year. Clay, football, Heinchel, the pass that took them over Sandusky in August. Huge plays from Mason Heinchel all throughout football season. He made some of basketball season. And then you've got boys basketball. Speaking of Javante Hill, the human highlight reel. You heard us talk about him on repeat here on the BCSN Nation podcast. And then you have Whitmer, the Napoleon Jemison game winning tip in buzzer beater to send them to the state final four. Amazing plays from all of those athletes up on the board. And then we'll take it to the classroom. Our scholars of the year. We've got Plenty. Caitlin Kazina from Northwood. Talene Bowman from St. Ursula. Keila Grooms from Anthony Wayne. Pierre Van Ziel, Southview. Josh Grix, Rossford. Alex Ibarra from Maumee. Gavin Daniel from Bedford. And Connor Long from A-Dub. Awesome performances from them in the classroom. Awesome performances on the field, on the court, wherever you're going to be. Great performances. June 9th, we'll check out all who those winners are going to be. I know I'm excited. I know Justin's excited. And I know we're excited for our Game of the Week brought to you by Dunn Chevy in Oregon. All right, we've teased at it. We've talked about it. We've hinted at it. We maybe have blown some spoilers towards it. Harrisburg St. Francis Regional Semifinal. This is going to be tomorrow at 5 p.m. on the BCSN app coming from Stellar Field out in BG. Six seed St. Francis, four seed Perrysburg, both riding hot streaks. How's the shake out? Yeah, right now, if you had to, if you did ask me, I was going to say, if you had to ask me, I'm going Perrysburg. Well, I did. <laughs> All right. Perrysburg. I think uh, watching them and kind of, and Matt Hubbard, who he is on the mound and that offense that they have and being able to get to, when I, the game I had him last week against Ashland, a really good arm and, and uh, Luke Bryant there from Ashland going to OU, being able to watch that full team compete. And you, and we say, at least in college at BGSU, win the three phases, hitting, defense, pitching. It seems like every game they're playing in right now, they're winning the three phases. So I, uh, I look to them to, to take it to St. Francis here and probably a close one, a nice little pitching matchup, maybe like a like a five, three, six, four type of game. Matt Hubbard, you've talked about him on the pitching mound. He's also batting 420 with yeah. 30 RBI throughout the season. A complete player playing complete games. You talked about Colin Hennessy. And I think watching that season and seeing their games come out, I think that first time they played Whitmer, when he was dominant in that one, that felt like the switch to where every time I saw Colin Hennessy pitch from there on, he was game. And we'll see who steps on if it's him or Mana Bublik. 
Yeah, I think it's definitely going to be Colin Hennessy against Matthew Hubbard in confirmation with the coaches and get okay. the matchup for this one. Here's so your breaking news. I think that uh, <laughs> not necessarily contrasting styles. I would say that Hubbard has more velocity, you know, faster fastball, a little bit bigger in stature. Uh, Colin Hennessy has kind of come along, hasn't been the number one guy like Hubbard has been all season long, but he's developed. I think Colin Hennessy uh, uses his strength, so he locates his pitches inside, outside, up, down, all speed, fastballs. He allows the batter to put the ball in play and then relies upon his defense. And I think that th that's the key uh, because if, if I'm a coach and I know I got a good defense and I have a pitcher who's crafty but is not overwhelming with power pitching, right. Okay, well then just play to what works, and that is be smart, locate your pitches, don't throw fastballs down the middle on an 0-2 count, and allow the team to put it in play, and we'll play good defense. And then live with the results. You know, sometimes you hit a hard hit, and it goes right to the second baseman, line drive out. Sometimes you hit a line drive, it goes in the gap, and you got to live with the results kind of thing. Right. But I'd rather have that than walk in the bases loaded. And we've seen a number of uh, game reports coming out of the districts where a team lost and why did they lose? Cause they walked six guys and hit two batters and Made had three four errors, errors in right. the field. Okay. So that, that doesn't get the job done, but when those errors happen, it's compounded when you get a guy on base for free with four, uh, with a uh, four base on balls. So I, I think with this matchup, it's going to be what works a, a power pitcher who's been there, done that. And then Colin Hennessy, who has been crafty and, and can, develop and process through a game and he, he might not be as fatigued in the sixth inning as maybe some other power pitchers are but i think thus far and a new game is a new game and a new week is a new week i get that but just saying through the tournament specifically in the tournament i think that saint francis has faced better competition finley anthony wayne and whitmer as compared to perrysburg who beat start ashland and southview yeah that doesn't mean that St. Francis has the clear cut advantage in this. I'm just saying so far in the last 10 ish days, I think that St. Francis might be a little more prepared, but both of these teams are legit. I mean, Dave Hall, you know, he's going to forget more baseball than I know in 39th <laughs> year at Perrysburg and Bobby Edgo second year at St. Francis, both. It just shows you, you know, you can have a type of team that can get deeper into the postseason. What I like about, I haven't had the chance to do the research just yet, but in the Division One, getting to the regional semifinals, we've had a number of area teams get there. Mm -hmm. It's not Perrysburg every year or St. Francis like this year, every single year. We've seen St. John's. We've seen Anthony Wayne. We've seen uh, Northview. So it's been a number of different teams who have gone on these deeper tournament runs, which is great because you know here in the media, we like to spread the wealth kind of thing yes. and to see different teams advance deeper. Yeah, this pitching matchup kind of reminds me of the regional final we saw in softball last week, right? Cat Myers taking on Mason Gerard. They kind of pitched those similar ways to Hennessy, to Hubbard, where one of them is a power pitcher. The other one's crafty, going to make you hit the ball into the field where they want you to. You catch that tomorrow, 5 p.m. on BCSN. It's a Thursday game of the week. You know what that means? Bogo boneless wings over at B-dubs. So stop there after 30 seconds. They'll tell you why you should go there tomorrow. I've saved so much money enjoying Buffalo Wild Wings BOGO half-off traditional wing Tuesdays. I can finally afford everything I've ever wanted in life. Like, uh, like, um, um, wings. All I ever wanted was more wings. So yeah, buy one, get one half-off traditional wings is the perfect deal for me and my lifetime yearnings. I value it more than literally anything. Buffalo Wild Wings. Let's go sports bar. At participating locations, not valid with other offers or discounts. See website or app for details. Your wings order is upcoming, and we've got games that are also upcoming, and it's on a graphic right on your screen. Beautiful. Hens are back in town, people. Scranton Wilkes Bar in town to take on the hens. Today's game, well, it's in the past from when you're listening to us. It was 11 a.m. at first pitch, and we've got soccer action. FC Buffalo, Toledo Villa, FC. That's going to be on the NLL Network. Don't worry, there's more Hens Thursday if you forgot about the morning game today. Scranton Wilkes Bar, they're in town all weekend. All right, taking on the Hens tomorrow, 6.30, and then the baseball action we have been talking to you about all episodes. St. Francis Perrysburg, 5 p.m. tomorrow, and then Napoleon here on 2 p.m., both of those games on the BCSN app. And then Friday, guess what? More Hens. More Hens, and then on I'm the app, about it. to be determined, we got to see, we're guaranteed St. Francis Perrysburg winner. That right, one right. will play on Friday, so we'll have that one on the app. And then same thing for Huron and Napoleon, our friends at BCSN area over here in Sandusky. We will 
be there one way or another. So game's on Friday as well. All right, stay tuned for all of that baseball action, whether it's MILB, high school, whatever it's going to be. And stay tuned right here every Wednesday, 4 p.m. for a brand new episode of the BCSN Nation podcast or get it anywhere you listen to your podcast, audio platforms, at Carnes Brandon, at Justin Felkett, at Adam Furness. It's easy and even easier at BCSN Sports. See you next week. We'll be right back.